Dave, welcome to another episode of Do Go On. And uh, look, I'm feeling a bit lonely on stage, so I'm going to introduce you to two friends of mine. Ladies and gentlemen, please give it up for Matt Stewart and Jess Perkins. Yeah! Hello! Hello! Two Saints supporters in the front row, Dave. Did you notice that? Game starts not. in five minutes. Fantastic. I will keep you updated with scores. Don't worry. <laughs> Or you can do it for me. Even better, I've got someone else to do. Yeah, great. Uh, <laughs> ask someone in the front row to be on their phone the whole time. That will really affect my confidence. So, yeah. that thank feels you. I like these two empty seats in the middle there too. Just, again, for me to stare at for the whole show. <laughs> <laughs> Mum and Dad? <laughs> they're not coming. Oh. No, they're on their way. They said, that they, <laughs> they said they'd come. Oh, but fantastic Sunday afternoon here at the zoo. How are we feeling? All right. <laughs> Got a lot of cheers. Your arms are very crossed there, mate. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm so, so sorry. It's a comfortable way to sit. It is. I know, but we automatically go, what? What's wrong? Who hurt you? I know, yeah. <laughs> Who hurt you? It's just a natural response. Um, give it up for the zoo, by the way. This place is awesome. Yeah, cool venue. Cool venue. So cool. It is weird to be able to see the audience, though. I'm used to darker rooms, and I'm distracted. Yeah. <laughs> So no, we're used to, uh, even daytime shows in Melbourne, it's always dark because Melbourne sucks and um, yeah. now you it's sunny. You know how to play a crowd. I do. <laughs> you love Melbourne, you love it, you Shut idiot. up, I don't. I hate you it. Do. I hate living there, it's the worst. Uh, it is funny to see your faces, so if you could all hide them, that would be Yeah, funny. thank Some you so people, much. Some people, oh yes. Being out of the face, perfect. Thank you, appreciate that. And it's just like you'd be at home then, I imagine you listen with your eyes closed and... <laughs> Think about how attractive we are, and now we've really ruined that for you. So, oh, oh. as your hand slowly descends, <laughs> an early regret face for you. So, yeah, he's yeah. gone early. Yeah, <laughs> he does go early. That's for sure. It's the only way you can make sure, you know. If you wait, what happens? You might lose momentum. Anyway. <laughs> um... <laughs> <laughs> It's not embarrassing, it's efficient. <laughs> <laughs> well, what did you just oh, think I was going to say, I just remembered, guys, this is our 200th episode. Yes! <laughs> That's quite nice. It is, it is quite nice, isn't it? Yeah, someone at home's having their 200th wank. Oh, uh, it's, it's great. That's beautiful. <laughs> Don't forget the Patreon bonus episodes, Dave. Oh, yeah. <laughs> They've probably had about 260 wanks. <laughs> yeah. Oh, boy. Just me? <laughs> Hey, there's uh, something we always ask at the start of live shows. Dave, do you want to do it? Uh, how are you? Yeah. How? He likes to check Anyone in. Anyone want to talk about anything? Any issues? No. One person surveyed the whole crowd. Yeah. No. No, what we like to ask is, give us a round of applause if you have heard this show before. Thank you. Thank, Thank God. You. Thank God. And no judgment, but give us a, a polite round of applause. <laughs> polite. polite. Keep it polite. If you've never heard this show before, a few people as well, great. And you've stayed towards the back, Don't. hoping we would never ask. Yeah. And then I did. Thank you so much. I'm assuming you've come along with other people who've dragged you along. Very nice. Well, that's very kind of you. Dave, explain what this is. Because well, <laughs> at the moment, they're like, who are these deranged people? Yes, that is very, very true. So basically what this show is, is uh, there's three of us here and we take it in turns usually to report on a topic suggested often by a listener of the show. Yes. But something we've been doing in the last few live shows we've done is we've decided to pick an overall subject and we're all going to do a mini report on that topic. Yes. And the topic we've picked today is World Records! <laughs> And that makes sense, because this is our world record uh, most ever Do Go On shows. 200. Yeah. yeah. We did it. Yeah. No one's ever done 200 episodes of Do Go On podcast no. before, so... They said it couldn't be done. Yeah. Who said that? <laughs> well, oh, we did. kill them. We did. Oh. Yeah. Oh, no. 
I am a man of my word. <laughs> How are you going to do it? Probably. Oh, well. My favourite way to kill... Um, but I like sort of just like getting some sort of chloroform and just going... And lowering you slowly to the ground. <laughs> but we can workshop it. How does it kill it. anyone? Anyway, it gone dark early. Oh, then, um, I, then, I, then, I, then I cut you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, uh, world record for most regret faces on this episode coming up. I can feel it. I can feel it happening. You are killing it. Now, uh, I'm going to go first for the world record report. This could be the world's longest mini report, so say, say to you, no, it's not going to be. I'll, I'll keep to time, which I rarely do, but I will try this time. And we always start with a question to get us onto topic. Yes. And my question is, which I'll throw to you guys, and if you know this, you know this, and if not, I'll throw it to the beautiful people here at the zoo. My question is, who is, or who was, and still is, oh. the tallest person ever? Robert Wildlife. <laughs> said Robert Wildlife. If it's correct, he I did. Stands by, he stands by his answer. Uh, I'll give you the point there, Matt. That's Thank one you. for you. Robert Wildlife, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Uh, Robert Wadlow. Wadlow. Unfortunately, no one here knew that, so... <laughs> um. How did you know that? You're a big nerd. Her words, not mine. I wasn't like, you're a big nerd. No, sorry, answer the question. But are you the world's biggest nerd? <laughs> That would impress us. Possibly. Well, Robert Wadlow, uh, have you seen photos of Robert Wadlow? He looked like a bit of a nerd. This is coming from you. <laughs> yeah, I'm allowed to say that. It's, you're my people, okay? <laughs> I'm allowed to, you're not allowed to say that. No, I'm you're too cool. You're too cool. You're allowed to bag out cool people only. Yeah. Nah, cool people don't need to be bagged out. They're cool. Yeah, they're super cool. Yeah. Well, Robert Wadlow was, is uh, the tallest person ever. Have you ever, you guys heard of him? No. Yes. I, well, I, I was assuming it was literally, uh, you know, six or seven bits of wildlife in a trench coat. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, I'm Robert. Robert Wildlife. <laughs> He's got a koala head. Oh, yeah, cute. Yeah. What else is in the rest of the trench coat? Uh, goanna. Yep. That's the neck. Mm -hmm. <laughs> then you got a uh, wombat chest. Obviously, yeah. Yeah, uh, and... and and then, you know, more wombats to the end. <laughs> <laughs> it's mostly wombats. Maybe, maybe yeah, wombats. Yeah. It's but a wombat wildlife Ultron. is, he's 90% wombat. Yeah. <laughs> no, aren't we all? Aren't we all? Okay, let's start with the, the secret life. Uh, that sounds fun, but it's not the secret life. The secret life of Robert Wadlow. Uh, Robert Pershing Wadlow. Pershing. Pershing. That's not a name. It's a great, I love it. He was born in Elton, Illinois on the... 22nd of February, 1918. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. You can leave now. Thank you. <laughs> You've peaked. You've peaked. No, I appreciate that. <laughs> There's probably a few more years coming up. So many more times to shine. Uh, Robert was the oldest of five children born to Harold Franklin and Addie Mae Wadlow. Oh, Addie Mae is cute as Beautiful. shit. Oh, love that. Addie Mae Wadlow, yes. At the time of his birth, he was 8.7 pounds, which meant nothing to me, but which is a pretty big baby. Usually they are on average between 5 and 8 pounds. So I was 8.7. No way! Yeah! Holy shit. It was mostly head. <laughs> oh, a really big head. <laughs> you haven't grown since you were born. No. I came out like this. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> And incredibly cool. <laughs> the, uh, the, I also looked up, because I'm an incredible nerd, the biggest baby ever was 20 pounds. Oh. Oh. Mm. And that mother never spoke to that kid again. <laughs> yeah. oh, she oh, she <laughs> couldn't do much <laughs> after that. Oh, God. But 8.7 pounds, so quite big, but nothing sort of out of the ordinary if you were 8.7 pounds. But from there... Jess, you're not the tallest person ever. All right, but I don't appreciate being called not, nothing out of the ordinary. Sorry. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> the fuck are you laughing at? <laughs> 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 that was a brilliant... <laughs> <laughs> uh, but from there, he started to grow, which most of us do, but Robert never stopped. That's the difference between us and greatness. <laughs> <laughs> By his first birthday, he was 45 pounds or 20 kilos, Ooh. and he was three feet, three and a half inches tall. 
He then, he kept growing. He overtook my height by the age of seven. What? Which would have pissed me off so much. <laughs> That's too big for a person. I don't want to upset you, but he's going to get a lot bigger. Yeah. Like, a, a lot bigger. Strap it's in. It's going to be so big. It is too big for a seven-year-old, yes. He overtook his own father's height of five foot eleven by his eighth birthday. He's eight and he's over five, five foot, foot 11. eleven. He's six foot on his eighth birthday. Fuck that. Oh. Meanwhile, his siblings, who he's also older than, remained heights that were completely normal for their ages. And despite their practic- him being practically triple their size, he was expected to play with his siblings and participate in the same activities that they did. He's going to kill them. <laughs> Basketball would have been horrendous. <laughs> but his parents, they tried very hard to give him a normal childhood. They knew that this was a bit out of the ordinary, but they, they tried. But it wasn't super normal for the young giant. Guinness World Records writes, uh, quote, When most children were still being carried by their parents, Robert was able to lift his father up the stairs of their family home. <laughs> In fact, at nine years, nine years old, he weighed 180 pounds. It was about 100 K and was uh, strong. En- I don't know, is that true? It was- Somewhere in the round, 90 kilos. He was strong enough to carry his father, who was sitting in a living room chair, up the stairs to the second floor. In Nine the chair? Years old. In the chair. <laughs> yes! Which... Oh, I'd well, love uh, that. I assume his father demanded he did this every single night. <laughs> I don't know. In fact, I think he demanded all his children do this, despite the ones that were only four years old and normal life. Uh-huh. He was a bit weird. Uh, meanwhile, Robert was so tall that in primary school, a custom desk had to be built to accommodate him. Yeah, cool. Because he was that big. At 13... Did he have one of those flip-up desks where you put all your shit in it? Remember those? <laughs> yeah. But they was... were really annoying when you had to get something out, but you're in the middle of something. Yeah. And then you have to, like, hold the lid like, <laughs> to get a pen. His was the size of half a football field. Right. Did At... you grow up in the 20s or something? When were those desks? Re- yeah, we still had them. Yeah, right. I think my primary school was a bit shit. <laughs> I'm learning that in hindsight. You know, kids, the ignorance is bliss. But now, I know the truth. You never know. Uh, At 13, he was 7 foot 4 inches tall. And he was named as America's tallest Boy Scout. That's the highest honour. I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He got his tall badge. (laughs) Uh, He had a customised uniform, tent and sleeping bag bag made for him in the scouts by this age it was actually it was a one in three it was a uniform a tent and a sleeping bag all in one they just sewed together ten sheets and threw them at him (laughs) by this age he had averaged a growth of four inches or ten centimetres per year since birth every year Jesus he was definitely the tallest boy scout because he was also already one of the tallest people in the entire country to put his height into context, at 13, if he had played in the NBA, he would still be in the top 10 tallest players to ever play that game. Whoa. At 13, if he, <laughs> but he wasn't picked. He wasn't picked. He passed uh, 2.45 metres or 8 foot uh, by the age of 17, giving him the title of the tallest teenager ever. Oh, man, I reckon he's going to go for tallest man. Oh. Spoilers! He's going for it. Spoilers! He's got Boy Scout. He's got teenager. Yeah, I'm coming for it. Come on, Robert. <laughs> Don't let me down here, Dave. I'm really Ooh. invested for well, some reason. Well, he kept growing. Yes. And when he finished, he finished high school, he was eight foot four inches tall. That is three inches taller than the current world record holder for the tallest person alive, a Turkish man named Sultan Kosen. Fantastic. <laughs> yeah. I mean, sometimes you you name a baby, you just know. <laughs> <laughs> you just know. <laughs> Uh, After graduating school, Robert enrolled in college with the intention of studying law, but he never made it to university because the Ringling Brothers Travelling Circus came to town and instead asked this tall teenager if he would join them because he'd be a great addition to their show, which he turned out to be true. The, quote, freakishly tall Wadlow was showcased alongside little people and he brought in record crowds and became a bit of a celebrity. So what did he have to do? Just stand there? Yeah, sort of stand there and then people of very short stature would stand next to him and they'd be like, Whoa. how is this possible? I like to think that he was an amateur juggler and he thought he was getting a call up. <laughs> yeah? Finally, yes. <laughs> I will juggle for you. No, just stand over there, you freak. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh, fair enough. Saddest juggler ever. <laughs> I've never seen a happy juggler. That's what's so remarkable about it. Yeah. He's sad even for them. <laughs> They're sad, and then there's juggler sad. <laughs> Any jugglers in today? A few juggler sympathisers, though, so... 
Yeah, a few people took that like it was quite harsh. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm not. <laughs> so, Wayne asked in a radio interview if he was annoyed when people stared at him. He calmly replied, quote, No, I just overlook them. <laughs> hmm? Good. He's funny too. <laughs> yeah, so he's in the circuit. A couple of years later, the International Shoe Company contacted him, which sounds made up, but... I think. Hi, I'm the president of the International Shoe Company. Can you send me your bank details? Yeah. <laughs> We'll send you a free pair of shoes. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, they asked him if he would become somewhat of a brand ambassador or on a promotional tour. An early days influencer. He was influencing in the shoe industry. In exchange, they offered to make him his custom shoes for free. Huh. They had to be custom made because of the size of his feet and they would be very expensive, costing 1500 US dollars per pair in, t- in today's money. It was like a whole cow. Yeah. Well, he... For leather shoes. Yeah. <laughs> Not yeah. for, like, canvas. The whole cow implies the meat and bones as well, though. <laughs> yeah, he was wearing cows. I know what I said. <laughs> <laughs> He's just walking around. <laughs> Milk's going everywhere. <laughs> uh, his feet were the largest feet ever recorded, measuring 47 centimetres long. Well over a foot and a half. <laughs> Did you say that you know what they say? Oh... Can confirm. <laughs> Look at the size of these puppies. Not in proportion. <laughs> <laughs> so 47 centimetres, that's the equivalent, just so for different people around the world, that's the, the equivalent of a US size uh, 37 AA, a UK 36, or a European size 75. So US 37, for context, I'm a US 8. <laughs> <laughs> that's wow. so good. <laughs> That's quite big then. Thanks for that context, Dave. Uh, he, so massive. Massive. Just imagine the biggest foot ever. You got it. <laughs> uh, he also had the largest hands ever, measuring 32 centimetres or 12.7 inches from the wrist to the tip of his middle finger. So an entire 30 centimetre ruler. Okay, yeah. It's, Was that it's a, a subway. Sorry, it, is that a, a full subway. sub or a half sub? That's a a whole sub. sub. More than a whole sub. <laughs> Between a big wrist... And finger. Bloody hell. Imagine him giving you the finger. You'd know. You'd know. <laughs> and across the room. Yeah. It, it could give you the finger and be like, ah. Uh, I'm sad to report. Oh. <laughs> Where'd you go then, Maddie? Well, he's giving me the finger. <laughs> I just, I just felt it on a deep level. How deep did you feel it? About a foot long. <laughs> uh, I don't even go that deep. <laughs> Quite a lot of him was still... Anyway, um... So, biggest, biggest hands ever. I am sad to report that sadly no sponsor came on board to make his custom gloveless fingers and his... <laughs> fingertips remained cold. Oh. But his palms were not sweaty, so that's good. He was a celebrity and people noticed him everywhere he went, but at home he led a quiet life and was nicknamed the Gentle Giant. We think for your dad to call him. Sorry. He was mild-mannered and polite and his hobbies included playing the guitar, photography and carrying his dad upstairs. Did he have to get a custom-made guitar? Because that would have looked ridiculous. Yeah. He's just playing classical gas. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like this big. <laughs> He looked like he was playing the ukulele at all times. <laughs> yeah. But everyday things were difficult for a man whose world and surroundings were not built for a man of his size. At home, he could be more comfortable, but he was constantly on the road at places not equipped for him. He also had to eat a lot of fuel for his large body. The average calorie intake for a man is uh, 2,500 calories. He consumed over 8,000 every day. But unlike many very tall people, Wadlow was still very mobile, never having to use a wheelchair although it was sometimes difficult to get about as he suffered from a lack of feeling in his legs and feet, really only feeling a tingling feeling at all. Like all the time? Yeah. So he's just just hoping that when he takes a step... He doesn't step into... It's going to work. Yeah. But he was able to get around. Wow. He did have a walking stick towards the last few years of his life, though. Uh, Doctors examined Robert and realised that his exceptional size was caused by hyperplasia of his pituitary gland. This condition causes... I was thinking that. That's what I was... I didn't want to say, but yeah, that's what I was thinking. Harbour Assembly of the Pur- 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 Man. <laughs> yeah. 
That'll do it every time. <laughs> every bloody time. He walks into your office. Hello, Mr. Wildlife. Um, <laughs> <laughs> take a seat. Um, so this condition uh, causes an, an abnormally high level of the human growth hormone, which I believe is similar to what Andre the Giant yeah, had. Yeah, I think so. And Robert was never given any treatment to stop it because the technology, well, we didn't have the technology at the time. And therefore, he just never, ever stopped growing. Guinness World Records writes on their website, uh, their medical consultant, Dr. Ronald Rao, explains, Robert Wadlow escaped the attention of surgeons as they were not confident enough to operate on him. Therefore, he might remain the tallest man for a very long time. There you go. There you go. The man who I mentioned earlier, uh, Sultan, who holds the current world record for the tallest man, has a similar condition, but he's been able to have the surgery to halt the production of the hormone. Right. Which is one of those things. You're the tallest man, but you, can't, you want that record. Yeah. Surely. Sounds like a bit of a quitter to me. Yeah. <laughs> you want the record, mate? Come on. <laughs> but uh, Wadlow never had such a luxury, and he just kept growing, and eventually to stand upright, he had to have custom braces fitted to his legs and started to use a walking stick, as I mentioned. Very tragically... One of his ankle braces was fitted poorly and gave him a blister. But because of his lack of feeling in his legs, he didn't notice that the brace was rubbing and causing him to blister. The, blis uh, the blister became uh, septic and infected, and just a week later he died from the infection on July the 15th, 1940, in his sleep, oh. at the age of 22. Oh, oh, what? So very, very young. 18 days before his death, he'd been measured for the final time at a whopping 8 foot 11.1 inches Fuck. or 2.72 metres tall. Oh, my God. Passing the... So many subways. Too many subways. <laughs> Surely he gets three foot logs for life. He passed the previous record holder, another American called John Rogan, who was 8 foot 9. Whoa. Uh, the giant man was buried in Oakwood Cemetery, Alton, in an enormous coffin measuring 3.28 or 10 foot 9 long. Whoa. So taller than ground to basketball ring height is the height of his coffin. It weighed over 1,000 pounds or 450 kilos and took 12 men to carry the coffin, supported by eight assistants. Basically going, oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Dave, you know, you, you know you said that it was only later in his life that he had to have a walking stick? He lived to 22. <laughs> Yeah, comparatively later in his life. Yeah, it's all relative. Yeah, the last three years of his, the last... That was late in his life. Yeah. Right. I know that was three centuries ago for you. Yes. Yeah, that's right. But we're all different. The joke there is Matt's very old. Just filling you in. Uh, just to finish up here, in 1986, a life-size statue of Wadlow was erected on College no. Avenue in Alton, Illinois, opposite the Alton Museum of History and Art, in honour of the city's... Most famous resident, Robert Wadlow. Oh, there we go. Dave Wadaki, everybody. Wow, what, what a guy. That's crazy. Such, such a tall man. I'm still hoping that I can eclipse his record one day. I've just seen there are Skittles on the stage. Mick? <laughs> yes. Mick, All why right. are there Skittles on the stage? Because this is what Mick does for me. <laughs> I believe it was the last time... It was anyone at our last Sorry. show in Brisbane nearly two years ago? Thank you. Were any of you hit in the face with Skittles then? Because... Oh, yeah! I threw you, Skittles at yeah. you! Don't sue! Yeah. We should have got you to sign a waiver. These the ones statute are... statute of limitations has passed Yeah, now. you're right. We're safe now. Yeah. These are sweet to heat. Fruity flavours with a spicy kick. What? Well, <laughs> I'm going to find out now if they're any good. Are these essentially chilli Skittles? Yeah. In a way, let's find out. Anyway, it's Matt Stewart's turn. Oh. <laughs> uh, does anyone want to score update on the footy? Oh, yeah, what do we got? 18 point lead of the Saints, everybody. We're doing it. Uh, Saints are a football team. Uh, they, they've been around since 1873. In that time, they've won one premiership. It was in 1966. Uh, they are officially the shittest team of all time. Thank you very much. And that completes my report. Uh, <laughs> World record for shittest sporting team. <laughs> but they're winning today. And they're like Melbourne's The Broncos. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Only shit. They're like Melbourne's The Gold Coast Titans. <laughs> Is that a better reference? You like that? Uh, go Wallabies. All right. Um, <laughs> Sam, really Thigh Day or Tie Day. Never, never know. Never know. Um, uh, Alfie Langer. <laughs> King Wally. 
I dreamt about King Wally last night. I just realised that was a dream. Yeah. He's Do you say basket. you don't need to know? I'm trying to open up to you. I'm trying to be vulnerable in the space, guys. I can't believe this. All right, well, here is my report. Oh, World yeah. record. Based so, report. Sorry, we're having our own conversation about the heat of the Skittles. Wow, I'm feeling there's a lot of heat in my mouth right now. And I say that a lot. We got hot mouth. Okay. <laughs> my question is... What record was set by a radio DJ that was broken by a schoolboy in 1964? Hopefully there's only one correct answer for this. It was a record set by a DJ yep. and then broken by a schoolboy. Yes. Huh. Where, where was this located? I have no idea. America. Oh, that narrows it down. Oh, fantastic. Can I uh, confer with my huge nerd audience member? Yeah. What do you think? Any idea? <laughs> Does anyone have any idea? Matt's questions are normally so easy. You had an idea. You put your hand up. That was very polite. The youngest DJ on stage. <laughs> well, youngest that's DJ. fun. That is a bet. I wish the report was about the youngest DJ. But this oh. is way dumber than that. It's the longest time without sleep. Oh. <laughs> I'm so sorry. If you know enough about that person... Come on up. Come on up. <laughs> now you say schoolboy. It should have been something like most wanks in one day Definitely. or something. That's all I was thinking. DJ and schoolboy, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that makes sense. A DJ, <laughs> loneliest person. <laughs> DJ, he... schoolboys, they feel lonely. <laughs> they wank a lot. Jess is a radio DJ. Yeah. And I'm lonely. And <laughs> she wanks a lot. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I need a skittle. All right. Here is Get my. Get some re- of that hot mouth. Yeah. Here is my report. Randy Gardner moved to San Diego, California. His name's Randy. In 1960... His name is Randy. <laughs> As a, I think it's about sleep. Um, <laughs> is sleep to, a euphemism? Moved to San Diego in 1963. It was a... S- San, San Diego. Diego. Mm. He was a 17-year-old at the time, the eldest of four kids. Due to growing up in a military family, he'd been re- relocating throughout his whole childhood. As a kid, he was interested in science, bit of a nerd... <laughs> Respect. And in every town he moved to, he entered the science fair, perhaps as a way of settling in to the new towns. As a way of announcing, I'm here and I'm a nerd. <laughs> no, yeah, he's, it's dominance. He's like yeah. asserting himself. It's like when you go to prison, you beat up the, the biggest, toughest guy. Yeah, when you yeah. go to prison, you enter the science fair. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. To assert your dominance. <laughs> King of the nerds. San Diego was bigger than Gardner was used to, so he knew he was going to have to go big if he was to win the science fair there. Oh. I find that very funny. <laughs> what about it, Dave? He's looking at himself in the mirror going, you got this, Randy. You got this. You gotta go you big. You gotta go big. Gardner teamed up with Bruce McAllister, another kid from his high school, and they brainstormed ideas. The one they landed on was breaking a world record, and the record they were going to break was held by Tom Rounds, a DJ from Honolulu. Ooh. Rounds, who had just gotten the gig as a radio disc jockey a couple of years earlier, attained the world record for the longest time going without sleep when he lasted 260 hours awake while sitting in a department store window display. Oh, you fucking psycho. Me no. or him? Oh, him, yeah. Him, not you. Well, yeah, in this case, him. You and I can talk off stage. <laughs> Did the department store know he was there? <laughs> <laughs> do, can you do the maths on that? How many days is that, Dave? How many hours? 260. 10. Yes, it's just plus short 20 of 11. hours. Yes, four hours. Wow, that is good. No. Four hours short of 11 days. Oh, I hate that. Following the stunt, he became a regional celebrity. <laughs> he was a big deal in Honolulu. Hey, you're the guy that didn't sleep that time. The 60s was wild. Um, <laughs> so much going on. McAllister, one of the boys, spoke to the BBC saying, the first version of it was to explore the effect of sleeplessness on paranormal ability. Not really sure what that means, but um, they realised that that was stupid. And... Um, well, and they... I mean, if they've seen the uh, X-Files episode Sleepless, uh, you'll know that they have a bit, bit of the back of their brain removed and then uh, they can't sleep anymore, but then they do develop paranormal powers. So I think you just out-nerded yourself. He was on... on <laughs> you know, um, in that episode of the X-Files that um, we all can reference off the top of our head. Surely, surely you know. Have you seen that episode of the X-Files? 
No, well, she's what? the biggest nerd. I mean, self-described is telling you ha- to shut up. Has anyone has anyone seen that episode? What are you all doing here? They have lives. I mean, get the box set. <laughs> Incredible. So, Did you, do you reference that episode at all in your report? N- yes. <laughs> <laughs> he wouldn't. He doesn't do his research. But I won't bother now. Yeah. Okay, sorry. You've already covered. That's I jumped true. it. <laughs> <laughs> so they put the paranormal idea in the bin and changed the scope of the study to be all about uh, the effects of sleep deprivation on cognitive abilities, including things, l- and then also things like performance on the basketball court. Basically, any sort of test that they could come up with as 17 year old boys, right? Who could wank the best? Um, <laughs> to decide which of them would be the subject of the experiment slash record breaking attempt, they tossed a coin. McAllister won the toss. Toss. And gave <laughs> the honour to Gardner. It gave the honour. Like, all right, I could have taken it, but I'll give it to you. Yeah, you... You, you stay awake for 11 days. <laughs> McAllister remembers, we were idiots, you know, young idiots. I stayed awake with him to monitor, monitor him, and after three nights of sleeplessness myself, I woke up tips, tipped against the wall writing notes on the wall itself. So he really is like, oh, I still have to be awake to record it anyway. So they realised they needed a second person to share the monitoring load and they roped in another school kid, Joe Marciano. Uh, From then on, Marciano and McAllister rotated between monitoring and uh, and that allowed each other to have a stint sleeping as well. The media started to show interest in the experiment and after reading an article in the paper, a sleep researcher called William Dement from Stanford University travelled out to visit the boys. This is him now. (laughs) Do okay. a voice. <clears throat> okay, <laughs> William DeMent, American man. <clears throat> American man, William DeMent. An educated man. He's An a, educated yeah. man from a university. American educated man. With hiccups. With hiccups. <clears throat> okay. Was, and a lisp. <clears throat> okay. Lisp and hiccup. I was probably the only person on the planet at the time... What do you think a lisp is? ...who had actually done sleep research, DeMent told the BBC. Randy's parents were really worried that this might be something that would really be harmful to him. <laughs> because the question was still unresolved on whether or not if we go without sleep for long enough, you will die. Yeah. What? <laughs> <laughs> what happened to Dement's, what happened to Dement's teeth? Yeah. That, that hurt my tongue. <laughs> yeah. Uh, just a little recap for those who don't speak whatever that was. Um, what's he say? I uh, said Randy's parents were really worried that it might be harmful to him, so they were they were um, relieved when the scientist man came and said, "I'm going to hang out with your teenage boys for a bit." <laughs> so I said, "Oh, thank God." <laughs> thank 24 God. hours a day overnight. <laughs> cool. Thank An God. adult supervising them. Thank goodness. <laughs> thank we we can leave. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want to hang out with them anymore. We're going to be over there if you need us. Sleep deprivation studies have been done on humans and animals as well. Do you know this? The BBC reported on one study where cats were kept awake for 15 days, at which point they died. Oh. <laughs> that is a brutal discovery when you're like, nah, no sleeping, no, nah, no. Nah. Oh. 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 Yeah, how are they keeping cats? Because the cat doesn't know that it's part of the experiment. Like, as a, as a, a consenting human, you can be like, no, I've got to stay awake, stay awake, and you have coffee and whatnot, but a cat's just trying to sleep, and you have to, like, splash water on it? Yeah. Is that what you do? I don't want to know. Well, the study proved relatively useless <laughs> um, in any way to prove that humans will die from a lack of sleep. It's firstly, this, case, uh, this study was done with cats, um, which are not humans, and they... Also, don't know if they died from lack of sleep or if stress or the chemicals they used to keep them awake had something to do with it. <laughs> okay. Is that question? To me, it sort of just sounds like a, a, a bunch of fuckheads with lab yeah. coats tortured some cats to death. Yeah, for science. For science. Yeah, we, we tried to keep them awake by running them over in my car and <laughs> they died. I can't tell what's the cause and what's the effect here. Anyway, can we have some grant money? <laughs> McAllister has confirmed that they didn't use any chemicals in their experiment, saying, Good. Randy had occasional Cokes, but other than that, you know, <laughs> Coca-Colas, yes. Right. No Dexedrine, no Benzedrine. The, the du jour stimulants in those days, he said. <laughs> <laughs> he also stressed that Randy is in fact a human and not wow. a bunch of cats sticky taped together. 
same weird that he brought it up, but... It is good to clarify, though, because you know there'll be the haters yeah. who are like, is it a boy or is it a bunch of cats? You know? we've, all, we've been all taken in by Gary Wildlife, the Wombat Man. <laughs> it's hard to remember things. <laughs> Dement rocked up a couple of days into the boys' experiment, finding Gardner to be relatively upbeat, though he was already uh, struggling to keep awake. Uh, Dement said he was physically very fit. Um, oh, Christ. <laughs> So we could Such all... Such a supple young boy. <laughs> An I mean, impeccable specimen of a boy. <laughs> I mean... Oh. <laughs> so we could always get him going by playing basketball or going bowling, things like that. He could get him going. <laughs> if he closed his eyes, he would be immediately asleep, though. So he <laughs> had to keep his eyes open. <laughs> Gardner... Gardner remembers finding the first few days relatively easy with tricks like uh, staying away from beds is one of the tricks he listed. <laughs> staying, like he sees one, he'll fall asleep, not even touching the bed, just looking at it. One of his other tricks was standing up. <laughs> <laughs> away from beds. <laughs> These are good tricks. Um, but it started to get harder a few days in. Gardner spoke to NPR, though, and remembered getting a boost when Dement arrived, arrived saying, he rented a car, a convertible, and we drove around in that. So we had a really good time when Dr. Dement came down. That really helped me because that was like something different and new to keep me going. Isn't that weird? I'm a scientist. I'm here to take your boys away in a convertible car. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Doris for science. Bye. Yeah, that's... Has anyone checked his credentials? Or... He's like, hi, I'm Dr. Dement. <laughs> Everyone's <laughs> like, seems legit. He describes sleeping drugs as t- the du jour. Yeah. Hey, that's take... the good shit. Yeah, take this stuff. I've tried it all. <laughs> as the exper- for science. Yes. As the experiment went on, they started finding some interesting results. For instance, one of the tests uh, looked at how lack of sleep affected Gardner's basketball skills. And as time went on, they found his game improved. Though this could be down to the fact that he was playing a lot more basketball than usual. <laughs> <laughs> he just practiced. He's playing uh, every day. Most people don't realise this, but Michael Jordan is the most tired man of all time. <laughs> He's never yeah. slept. He's never slept. They also tested the effects on his senses, and McAllister remembers as time went on, Gardner would become more repulsed by certain smells. Um, Not sure what the smells were. Teenage boys were probably just farting in his face. (laughs) At the start, he loved it. (laughs) Eight days in. No good. No good. The experiment continued to gain media attention, and according to the BBC, the study was briefly the third most written about story in the American national press after the assassination of John F. Kennedy and a visit by the Beatles. That, I was going to say top three. That's sh- not that great. But that, those stories are pretty big stories. Uh, the, the boys stuck with it. And they uh, finally, on the January the 8th at 2am, 1964, Randy Gardner broke the world record at exactly 11 days or 264 hours. And the experiment was over. Ugh. It was at 2am. Yes. Meaning that he'd woken up on the first day at 2am to start. Surely the first day you have a massive sleep in. You, you get out of bed at midday. Nerd. You get out of bed at midday. What, do you wake up at 2am after going to bed for two hours? Well, why are you assuming he went to bed at midnight? He could have gone to bed at 5pm. No teenager does that. <laughs> uh, Gardner was then taken to a naval hospital where his recovery could be monitored. His first sleep went for 14 hours and 40 minutes. Dement remembers that... His first night, uh, in his first night, his percentage of REM sleep or REM state sleep skyrocketed. Then the next night, it dropped in percentage points until finally, days later, it returned to normal. And then he got up and went to high school. It was amazing, Dement remembers. Dement was watching him sleep the whole 14 hours. (laughs) Dement is a real person. This is all allegedly. (laughs) Definitely is a legit scientist, I think. Uh, McAllister told the BBC that the hospital results concluded that his brain had been catnapping the entire time. Parts of it would be asleep while other parts would be awake. Oh, cool. Um, What's the bird that can turn half its brain off? Is that an ibis? Yes. <laughs> it's kind of doing that. Yeah. Is that an ibis? I know, I know they're a bin chicken, but are they the ones that can turn off their brain? All yes. All right, never mind. i tell you a couple of cats that would have killed for a cat nap. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, they're having that everlasting catnap in the sky. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Huh? Wake up. Wake up. Oh. Uh, 
McAllister, of course, is not a scientist at all. He was just a boy doing an experiment. So him saying that, I don't know. But anyway, he went on to say he wasn't the first human being or pre-human being to have to stay awake for more than one night and that the human brain might evolve so that it could catnap. Parts of it would catnap and restore while parts of it were awake. It made total sense. And that would explain why worse things didn't happen, he says. Despite their studies seemingly showing there are no negative effects to it, the Guinness Book of World Records no longer includes a sleep deprivation category as they believe that it is dangerous to people's health. So a bit of a bloody uh, difference of opinion there. (laughs) Gardner, now in his 70s, seems to uh, back up this idea, telling NPR that in his 60s, I stopped sleeping. I couldn't sleep. And he blamed the study for, from decades <laughs> prior. T- so he broke his world record of 11 days by not sleeping for a full decade. <laughs> <laughs> he said, that's why I keep calling this some karmic payback for, you know, my body going, okay, buddy, yeah, okay, 11 days without sleep when you know damn well you need sleep. Well, let's try this out for size. <laughs> it's him talking to himself about having insomnia. Wow. <laughs> he sounds like he lost it. <laughs> yeah, he's been affected. U.S. Berkeley neuroscientist Matthew Walker agrees with Gardner that any sleep deprivation is bad for health, saying to NPR, even just the smallest amount of insufficient sleep leads to health consequences. And one of the best examples of that is one of the largest sleep experiments ever done. It's performed on 1.6 billion people, and it happens twice a year, and it continues to happen. It's called daylight savings. You don't do that, do you? So you won't understand. So it's a, actually, you, you do sound smart now, because apparently... Um, in spring, when we lose an hour of sleep, we see a subsequent 24% increase in heart attacks. In the fall, when we gain an hour of sleep opportunity, there's a 21% decrease in heart attacks. So apparently, apparently daylight savings is a killer. <laughs> Isn't that wild? And Queensland don't do it. I don't yeah, but we get just right. that little bit is more sunshine. <laughs> it confuses the cows. That was the excuse. It confuses it the, cows. the cows. What, do you like have clocks in your fields or...? Put digital watches on all your cows. <laughs> Is it bedtime? Not yet. <laughs> and the fading story. curtains, right? That's the other one. But I mean, never look at this place, huh? Yeah, very smart. The zoo's a smart place. Anyway, the Boys Sleep Project earned them first place at the 10th annual Greater San Diego Science Fair. And that is the end of my report. They won! Wow. They won! They did it! I do, have a, I do have a couple of fun facts here to finish my report on, I'll, though. I'll decide. Okay. Well, these are, these are fun facts from the Guinness Book of World Records, if you think you're, you know, you've, you've got the authority there. Okay. Yeah. Um, so this is the first fact. Um, based on a 24-hour period, the king of nappers in the animal kingdom is the little brown bat. In, capac- in captivity, these North American mammals have been documented sleeping for 19.9 hours straight, more than 80% of the day. Huh? That's good. Believe it or not. Uh, I have no idea what this is. We did not discuss this. A second fact... (laughs) (laughs) At the other end of the scale, second fact here, the mammal that sleeps the least is the African bush elephant which has been found to sleep only two hours per day on average. (laughs) Someone said, please, no. (laughs) You speak for all of us. (laughs) What is that music? 
It's the Ripley's Believe It or Not from the... I don't know. I just found oh. it on YouTube before. Matt Stewart, everybody! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can go to the bar. Do you have time to go to the bar? I mean, I'm not going to have a break right now. I'm not just going to sit here and wait for you. I'm probably just going to keep going. You'll be at the bar at the back of the room, and I'm pretty confident you'll still be able to hear me. Can you hear me, man, at the bar? He can hear me. We're all good. Saints only up by six. Six, six goals? Okay, As, more, well, more... basically, if the Fremantle Dock has scored some tries and converted those penalties. A little more originally than that, some water just started leaking from the <laughs> roof. But that's okay. Um, Believe it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> They're watering plants. Ah, oh, that makes more sense. That was something just for us. But trust us, it's there. A little bit um, of magic. All right, final report for the day. And mine's not about a person. Ooh. Ooh but it. But it is a little bit fucked. So... <laughs> good. We got some fuckheads in. It's a working title. Um, I need to give you that warning so that you go with me on this one because if you all go a bit sensitive, we're not going to have a good time. So my question to you is, you're loving those Skittles, aren't you? A little too much. Take them away, please. I mean, you can just stop eating them also. I cannot. All right. My question is, which joke of a city in the US (laughs) attempted a world record in 1986? Prepare to get emails from this city. <laughs> yeah. And I will, it's no, not Gary. she said joke of a city. Yeah. Not oh. God amongst cities. Yeah. It's surely, it's surely oh. no, it's nowhere in Vermont because that is the world's greatest Hang state. Hang on, we've got a hand up. Very polite. Yes. Akron, it's oh. not Akron, Ohio. God, that would be so good. I said Ohio also. Yeah, you'll also get told he's saying Akron wrong, as we Akron. always do. Akron, Ohio. Yeah, there's Akron. A, there's a W in it or something somehow? No. Akron. Akron. I think it's our friend. Seen that right? Do our either of you have any idea? Any um, idea? Any idea? Give, give us a state. Give us a state. Kentucky. Oh, uh, Kentucky. It is. I think it's Ohio. <laughs> it All is right, in Ohio. Ohio. Is it? Uh, you got What's Cincinnati. You got. Uh, it's in Ohio. <laughs> uh, it's a Cleveland. That's right. Cleveland. She's been saying it for two minutes, Jess. Okay, no, 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 honey. I said you could hear me from up the back, and not I could hear you from up the back. Okay, I'm the one with the microphone. Yeah. Next time I can lend this to you, and you can <laughs> go with it. All right, the year 1986, the city Cleveland. Good year, a good city. Good, well, the world record. <laughs> Is it a joke of a city? LeBron James. I'm about to explain. <laughs> The world record involving a lot of motherfucking balloons. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm in. Have you heard of this? <laughs> I have. It's fucked, but it's great. In a way, you're just going to have to go with that. All right, so the city of Cleveland, basically as a city, was sick of being m- the butt of the jokes. <laughs> the rest of the country were like, Cleveland sucks, and they're like, no, oh, come on. Um, they were sick of being known as the mistake on the lake. <laughs> But, uh, Cleveland is on a lake. That really By hurts. the way, <laughs> the mistake on the lake. Fuck, I love a rhyme though. So they needed to do something big, something oh. amazing, something that would make Cleveland seem cool to the other states oh. who were like, "Ugh, Cleveland sucks." <laughs> a city rebrand is awesome. <laughs> so good. So the year prior in uh, '85. You should do that here. <laughs> so you don't know how to work at. No, I, I honestly love Brisbane. Just plan, plan mean and keep them keen. <laughs> I love Brisbane a lot. Do you though? Yes. All right. Yeah. I do. They've lost all trust. In 85, right, so Disneyland had celebrated its 30th birthday and as part of their celebration, they'd released a metric shit ton of balloons. Oh. Uh, which at the time set the record for the most balloons simultaneously released. Could you put that in a Subway sub? <laughs> Uh, it's, it's like a... Okay, so a metric shit ton of balloons would be like a, a metric shit ton of subs. Okay, yes. Thank Does you. Does that help? Yep. Um, wow. That's a lot of subs. Yeah, it's heaps. So Disneyland had done it and Cleveland were like, we're coming for you, Disneyland. <laughs> they thought they had... Disneyland did not return their calls. <laughs> the stunt was coordinated by a Los Angeles-based company called Balloon Art by Treb. <laughs> Who's Treb? It was headed by a man named Treb. 
Treb Heining. Treb. That's a beautiful name. So, so the, the city mayor brought in a man named Treb and put all hey, his trust. That's Bert backwards. Oh. Do you reckon his name was Bert? And he was like, I'm going to be a little more interesting. I'm going to be Treb. Treb. He made the anyway. right choice. So he was a balloon guy at Disneyland when he was a teenager. When he was about 15, he was like, oh man, I'm freakishly good at balloons. Oh, like making like balloon animals? Yeah. Used to do that at kids' parties. Uh, it's tough work. <laughs> no, I think you just have little hands. Yeah, I do have little hands. And... Um, Often kids would ask, oh, you'd be like, what do you want? I can make a giraffe, a dog. And a kid would be like, I want a snake. And you'd say, it's going to be pretty shit. And they'd say, no, I really want a snake. Yeah, okay. So you blow up a balloon as long as it can go. And then you hand it to them and they go, yeah, that's pretty shit. And then you and the kid, you're like, we were right about this. Yeah. You have a nice moment. Um, so he's like, oh, man, I'm super good at balloons. Uh, So he ended up creating his own company and giving it a super cool and clever name. Balloon Art by Treb. (laughs) I love him. If they're open for advertising, I'll do it. (laughs) Balloon Art by Treb. It sounds like a um, a perfume. (laughs) Um, I read that he was was contracted to work on the 1984 Olympics opening and closing ceremonies with his balloon art. So he's like, like one of the best balloonists ever. Yeah. And uh, there was a guy called Tom Holowack who worked with Treb and later became the project manager for Balloon Fest, 86. And he did an interview and he was talking about the work they did at the Olympics and he said, we had to design the logistics of filling hundreds of balloons that made Olympic rings and then cheerleaders moved them to spell welcome and then let them go. I was like, oh, give us more of this in-depth analysis of how (laughs) balloons work. I love this. So to beat Disney's record, the plan was to release 1.5 million balloons... Into the Cleveland sky. That is a lot of balloons. It's I will, a lot of I will, balloons. I'll give Treb that, I will. <laughs> it's quite a lot. They also thought it would be a good fundraising opportunity. So school kids sold sponsorships for like a dollar per balloon. Um, and all the proceeds were going to go to this charity, um, United Way. So they're like, okay, this is a nice little collab. We're going to raise some money for charity. And we're also going to finally be cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So the team at Balloon Art by Treb. Oh, so this is a whole team. It's not just Trip. There's a team. (laughs) Wow. Trip has a team. Balloon Art by Trip. I'm on on team Trip. They spent six months planning the event and working out the best way to hold 1.5 million balloons in one place so that they could be released at the same time. So it's not that, like... I I don't think they have 1.5 million people. So they can't, like... It's not everyone just holding a balloon and let it go. They've got to contain them and then they all have to go at once. Um, So what they did... Dave, were you picturing Trip? Blowing up each of the 1.5 million balloons. Yeah, I mean, how else can he claim ownership of the balloons? Well, they're not all his balloons, but he was interviewed. And basically, and I'll talk about it, but they get, like, school kids and volunteers to do it. Like, thousands of them. And they're like, how many balloons do you expect people... That's how they talked back then. Is that how many, they've been sucking in here? How many balloons do you expect people to blow up? And he was like, well, I mean, they're kids, so maybe two a minute. And he was saying, like, I mean, I can obviously do... <laughs> them a lot faster. Like, oh, two, fuck off, Treb. Two, I mean, it would take me 15 minutes just to get it onto the end of the nozzle. That's true. It wouldn't take you that long. Yeah. So they need to contain the balloons, right? So that what they do is they create a giant net. <laughs> I was hoping for a big net. I really was. <laughs> well, you're getting a big net. So this is from the project manager again. He said, we had to design a structure that filled a city square and could stand up to 90 mile per hour winds, which was building code. The one piece of net was fabricated by the exact company I found in SoCal who built the cargo nets for the space shuttle. Weird brag. Um, Why do space shuttles need nets? Do they have balloons? (laughs) How do you think they get up there? (laughs) You idiots. Come on, Matt. Dumb question now that I have to think about it. Think before we speak, mate. So they built this structure. It was the size of an entire city block. It was 250 feet or 76 metres by 150 feet. That's 150 foot longs, by the way. Um, Whoa. And it was about three storeys high. It was like how would, how'd you convert feet into foot longs so quick? I'm actually secretly really good at maths. <laughs> Don't tell. Um, 
And it, it was so it was covered with this mesh material. So it's sort of like this huge, big structure. And on the day, uh, on the launch day, which was Saturday, September 27, in 86, there was 2,500 students and other volunteers spent about six hours inside filling the balloons with helium. So they're inside. The, I was going to say little structure. It's fucking huge. They're in this town square. They're all filling balloons. And then they just sort of let them go. And they sit up in the top of this weird-looking net. And originally, they planned to release two million balloons. They're like, fuck it, let's go big. Two million. But then they stopped at only 1.4. And the reason they stopped is because it looked as if the weather was going to turn. Oh, no. (laughs) So they were like, let's just go a bit early. So at 1.50pm, crowds of people who'd come out to volunteer or just to spectate counted down from 10. It was so exciting. There was news broadcasters. There was so many people there to spectate. Um, Why are you building up this? What could possibly... (laughs) Oh, are they going to release the balloons? (laughs) Yeah. Spoilers. So people are really excited. Well, Cleveland has nothing. So they're like, this is... Come on, put us on the map. They're excited. Cleveland, they've got the Cavaliers, LeBron James. They've got, I think, the... You don't have the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. They've, they've got Drew Carey, Cleveland yeah, Rocks. Yeah, Cleveland Rocks. Yeah. We all know that. Yeah. And, and, and some balloons. And so that should now negate four. the angry emails from Cleveland. <laughs> yeah. So they set, they, they release the balloons and it totally encompasses this terminal tower. It's a big, <laughs> big building. Yell, release the balloons. Release the balloons. <laughs> <laughs> so all these balloons get released and they like take over this giant skyscraper tower. Like it's completely surrounded by balloons and they're all floating into the air and everyone's losing their fucking minds. They're so excited. You would be, you would be. You That's would be, it's it would look exciting. Amazing. They're like, we've done it, we're the best. Now, I don't know how much you guys know about helium balloons. I know quite a bit. Ask me anything. <laughs> <laughs> well, how long, like, how long will a balloon stay aloft? Um, anywhere from, you know, seconds to three, four minutes. Yeah. Well, I mean... Actually, science doesn't really know the answer, but yeah. that's their best guess. Yeah. So... Well, typically, and as you know, uh, a helium-filled balloon... Yep. That's released outdoors mm-hmm. will stay aloft mm. yep. long enough to be fully deflated before it then eventually makes a nice little descent to Earth, right? But well, that's what—that's the theory. That's the theory. <laughs> that's oh. the stuff. I saw that on Star Trek or something. It was some sort of a a theory. Yeah. Yeah. I think I understand science, Jess. That's what you mean. <laughs> well, the balloon fest balloons collided with a front of cool air and rain. Um, so instead of floating along wistfully and being all cute, they um, dropped towards the ground, still inflated, clogging the land and waterways of northeast Ohio. <laughs> now, don't worry, guys, because the event planners had accounted for about 10% of the balloons ending up in Lake Erie. They're like, we're on a lake, balloons are going to end up there, yep. 10% of them, okay. no big deal. Now, right. this sounds like a mistake on the lake. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Their numbers were a tiny little bit off because of the weather. So it was more like 60% of the balloons. Okay. Which, guys, it's only like 840,000 balloons in a lake. <laughs> Relax. Oh, thank God. It's a pretty big lake, but that's still a fuck ton of balloons. What imp- I can't please you. That's so many balloons. That's so many. It's so many. That didn't please you? A lot of balloons in a lake isn't enough to please you? Well, I give, well, I give up as well. I what else can you do? I'll, I'll Tell keep someone trying. I don't about know how many balloons are in a lake. Nothing. I don't even know. It's wild. <laughs> it's so many balloons in a lake. It is a lot. And normally they'd sort of be like, well, oh, that's unfortunate. But around the same time that all the balloons ended up in the lake, the Coast Guard had kind of been searching for two missing fishermen for a while. <laughs> A lady at the back just clutched her partner's knee. I hope that's your partner or that was weird. Oh, um, I think I know what will happen here. The balloons will somehow make it easier to find yes. the missing fishermen. Yeah, you, or they'll be able to crawl across the balloons to the shore. Uh, perfect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Performing some sort of pontoon-like. Like they'll float floating. to safety. Yeah. yeah. The cold front will come in. Science will happen. Fantastic. <laughs> and we'll say, thank you, science. Are you, those fishermen aren't here with us today, are they? <laughs> <laughs> those two guys out the back. That's what the water was for. <laughs> uh, yeah, sorry, I misspoke. They're not fishermen, they're fishmen. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so 
So these guys had gone out fishing the day before and they'd been reported missing, so the Coast Guard was looking for them. Um, but now there's 840,000 balloons in the lake. So it's a, it's a little bit harder to find them. Imagine because you were lost on a lake and then 840,000 balloons just started descending upon you. Yeah. Well, str- the Coast Guard was struggling because it was difficult to see a person floating or a bright orange life jacket when the lake was filled with 840,000 colourful balloons. <laughs> So like, is that it? No. Is that it? Oh, no. Is that it? And it looks like most of them were orange, to be fair. The balloons. Oh, that's unfortunate. I told you it was fucked. You have to go with it. <laughs> After three days of searching, Coast Guard suspended their search, only for the fishermen's bodies to wash up on shore a few days later. <laughs> and how many balloons? So many balloons. The wife of one of the fishermen actually sued the United Way of Cleveland and the company that organised the balloon release for $3.2 million. Not <laughs> Treb. He can't afford it. He's put all his money into balloons. <laughs> into balloon art by Treb. Um, she wasn't the only one to sue either, um, but she was probably the only one who had something legit to sue about. No, that's maybe unfair. But anyway, so some balloons landed out on a pasture in Medina County, Ohio, which is about 50 kilometres away. Wow. And there's a woman called Louise, and these balloons landing spooked her horses. My no. horse has got spooked. No, sh- surely. You get 3.2 million if your husband dies. You've got to get a lot more than that if your horse is spooked, surely. Well, she, she sued for about $100,000 in damages. What a country. <laughs> because her horses got spooked. Popping balloons are scary, though. That is true. Especially if you're a horse. So that basically is what happened. There was a couple of horses in the field. <laughs> <laughs> but that moment... Yeah was worth 100 grand. Apparently they had late injuries later in their lives from getting spooked. It had nothing to do with the fact that she trained them for horse, horse racing. Can horses get PTSD? Oh. I, I mean, I've never asked a horse. Anyway, so there's also an issue at the airport. Um, you'd think that it would be that there were millions of balloons in the sky, but actually the bigger problem for airplanes came when the balloons landed um, and the Burke Lakefront Airport had to shut down one of their runways because there was just so many wet, unpopped balloons <laughs> all over the runway. <laughs> the planes couldn't land can, there. Can I ask, even in a perfect world, what they expected to happen to the balloons? I don't... Exactly. What did you think? I don't... Like, what do you think? They're going to go straight up and come straight back down, put the net back over the top of it, <laughs> and then you pop them one by one with a pin. Well, this is, this is one of my favourite things. So a guy made a short film that's just, like, uh, archived... Uh, news reports from like that time so it was all the ones of like really exciting beforehand and then it cut straight to like okay so this probably wasn't so great but a couple of days later there's this um, this news reporter and uh, this is a quote from her she says well the balloons that filled the lake on Saturday are no longer here no one knows where they've gone but at least they're no longer posing a threat to fish and wildlife and they're not littering the lake where the fuck do you think they went (laughs) Does she not understand how water works? It moves, you dumb bitch. Oh. I called a woman a dumb bitch and you clapped. Mm. I love you, Brisbane. (laughs) So she's just like, well, problem solved. But not problem solved. um, Because the the balloons were biodegradable, sure. But they still took a long time to disintegrate. And even weeks after the event, people were still seeing the balloons hanging around their beaches. And most of the balloons ended up floating across to the Canadian side of Lake Erie. So they're like, not our problem. (laughs) It's a gift. (laughs) Um, It was... uh, The Canadians probably thought they were the millionth shopper at the local (laughs) electronics store. Does that make sense? Why were the balloons in the lake then? It's weird culture up there. Yeah, weird I'll never culture. understand those Canadians. Yep. Um, yeah, so it was obviously a, a big, big spectacle. It didn't go very well. It became an international sensation uh, thanks to newspaper reports and the complaints that started flooding in afterwards. Um, one man, uh, his name was Floyd, from Washington, was dismayed at the amount of money that United Way had spent... <laughs> Uh, he also noted the hypocrisy in spending so much money on what was supposed to be a fundraiser. He was like, it seems to me the money, for the spend- money spent for this stunt, which is about 500 grand, could have been used to much better advantage, seeing as how most of the funds were probably from donations from people who donated because they believe their money is going to a good cause. 
Floyd makes a very good point there. Yeah, that's right. But, guys, but it's got a happy ending. Did they make a profit? I don't... Not after the suings, no. I don't think so. (laughs) I'll put a dent. Yeah, Yeah. that'll... I mean, if you've got to pay 100 grand for every horse in the state... That really adds up. That's when a you lot feel of... weird, I'm I'm a person with horses, obviously doing pretty well. I'm going to sue a charity because they got a little spooked. So <laughs> give me that charity money, please. My horses, they were spooked. Uh, it's good news, guys, because a couple of years later, the Guinness Book of World Record recognised the event as the largest ever mass yeah! balloon release. We did it. They did yeah! it. It was worth it. Oh. You can't buy PR like that. You can't. And, um, and obviously, as we all know now, here in the future, that uh, Cleveland is the coolest city. So. Yes, it is. In the second coolest state in the whole United States. Yeah. Of course, second only to Vermont. Fantastic city. Very cool uh, place. <laughs> state. So that is my report on the Balloon Fest 86. Believe it or not, I do. I believe it. Wild. I'm glad, I'm glad that we almost got through a whole episode without anyone... Dying and everyone feeling bad about it. Well, so. I mean, Robert Wadlow really? did die at 22. Yeah. Oh, yeah, and those cats did die on my report. Yeah. Um. <laughs> the show, so many people die on our show now that it's just become blase. <laughs> <laughs> so if, it's a, if it's a death count of under like 100, we're like, that's pretty good. Oh, wow. Nice, lighthearted episode. Yeah, got, got rid of that one unscathed. Oh, uh, but that does bring us to the end of our record setting world record episode 200. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you. I really do appreciate everyone coming. I, I'm not going to update the Scots anymore. Don't. No, she's saying don't look. It's not good. Footy got cancelled in the end, so. <laughs> oh, Footy mama. doesn't exist. A um, bit of uh, like admin stuff. We're going to have a break now, so you can grab a drink, and then we're going to be doing another show in about half an hour's time. Yeah, 30 minutes. We'll be back on this. <laughs> Thank stage. you so much. <laughs> For converting that into yeah. simpleton time. Uh, th- 30 foot longs, <laughs> of course. Yeah. Half an hour, what could it mean? <laughs> hey, not everyone's a maths genius, mate. <laughs> we're going to have a break um, and then we're going to come back and we're going to do uh, basically like a trivia game. It's going to be very loose and incredibly silly. <laughs> so I would definitely say have a few drinks. Yes, please drink. We will. Um, we're also going to be up the back there by the giraffe. Just uh, We've got a few t-shirts for sale. If you would like them, you can come up and also say hi. We'll do that for like 15 minutes. We'll do it more later. Um, but yeah, we'll be over there and uh, we're going to have a break now and Dave, save me please because I'm uh, rambling. Thank you so much. So 30 minutes just to, uh, just to confirm. <laughs> Half one full hour. So, I'm so sorry about that. <laughs> I'm so sorry. No, we'll we be back. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, at the zoo for our 200th episode up here in Brisbane. Thank you so much for coming out. <laughs> Thanks to the venue. They've been a fantastic place. We really appreciate that. And until next week from the stage, I will say thank you. Oh, laters. Bye. Goodbye.